This is a great test question. The reason why it's a great test question is because a lot of students get it wrong. Now, I'm not trying to be mean as a teacher, but what it's gonna do is gonna really test not only your understanding of logarithms and their properties, but also some algebraic manipulation, making sure that you're not getting things confused. So it's a great question to, that's not just something routine that a lot of students can memorize. You really need to make sure you're applying the, the properties correctly and also understand what you're doing. So in this case, we have two times brackets here. We have ln of x minus ln of x plus one minus ln of x minus one. So we have two subtractions. Now, what's confusing about this is a lot of students remember the quotient property and they can apply it rather easily. All right, most students don't get confused. They kind of get it memorized. All right, if I have two logarithms separated by subtraction, that's going to be a quotient of their two arguments. But in this case, we have three of them. So what do we do? Well, what we're gonna wanna do here in this case is kinda of remember PEMDAS, right? And when you remember PEMDAS, when we're dealing with like multiplication, division, or and addition and subtraction, one thing that we always followed was always go left to right. We always wanna apply left to right. So in this case, we're always gonna work inside the parentheses, right? Just kind of like the PEMDAS rules of our operations. We're not gonna wanna apply the two um, or worry about that two, distribute that. We're just gonna focus here on inside the parentheses. And in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work from left to right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply this property one by one. I'm not going to try to do everything at the same time. I'm just going to do it one step at a time. Okay, so now you can see as I apply the quotient property correctly over here, and now you can see that I have something that is a little bit more familiar with me, right? I now have ln of x over x plus one minus ln of x minus one. Now, here is where the mistakes come in because students are like, all right, I know what to do here. Right? I just need to write division one more time, um, but I'm not really sure I'm gonna get the right answer. So I'm gonna help you with that, don't worry. Okay, so before we go ahead and apply this power here, what we wanna do is be able to figure out what the heck is this, right? What is that going to go ahead and simplify to? And how is that gonna work? Like, how is that gonna look? So main thing I wanna do is just kinda of go back to a little bit of basics with you, okay? If I had three divided by four divided by five, what exactly is that answer? Now, the one thing I want you to understand is when you are simplifying fractions, let's do something a little bit easier actually. Let's do A divided by B divided by, let's do a big thing, divided by C over D, all right? So the main thing I want you to understand is when you're dividing fractions, right, that is going to be the same thing as just multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay, and you just multiply straight across. Now in this case, you might be saying, well, what, what's my numerator, what's my denominator, and what do I have here? Well, in this problem, it's the exact same thing. All we simply wanna do is just rewrite our denominator here as over one. Now we can see that that is just going to be a three-fourths times a one-fifth, okay? So the exact same thing is kind of working on over here. We have this, we have a fraction in the numerator, but we don't have a fraction in the denominator. So all we simply need to do to simplify this, to make our life easier, is just to rewrite this as over one. Now we can apply this idea of dividing fractions is just going to be multiplying by the reciprocal. So therefore, if I multiply by the reciprocal of my denominator, that's gonna be a one over x minus one. Okay, and now what I can simply do is I can go ahead and simplify in there. Notice that this is the difference of two squares, so that's gonna be an x squared minus one. And then I can go ahead and rewrite my number in front using the power rule. I can go ahead and rewrite that as the power. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We have now condensed this expression on our test and we're not going to get the wrong. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. And if it was, I know you're gonna enjoy the next video I have for you here.